So good evening everybody, it is I, Nick Pennsylvania, I'm here as always with my good friend, Brendan Bond. Good evening, Brendan. Good evening, Nick. And I am, uh, actually, of course, none of these are live, so this, this doesn't <laughs> matter that I'm telling you this, but I am actually away. So as you are, if you're listening to this and it's come up fresh, I am actually on the other side of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania out in the Poconos. Uh, am I enjoying myself? Sure. But I'm also working very long days. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely, definitely getting some baklava at the Swiftwater Ooh. Diner, and there is a fair chance that that is what I'm doing as you're listening to this. So I think I can trust that we are all enjoying ourselves very well <laughs> at this moment, Agre- whenever agreed. this moment is. Yeah, okay. whatever this is, it's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good time, no matter when you're listening to. That's it. right. Yeah, so absolutely. So again, I want to thank everybody for the questions that we've been getting. I had quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, come through email and whatnot. And I know at the end, uh, Bond will reiterate our email address. And I am, I am definitely doing a better job of checking on it. <laughs> but of course, you can always. I mean, Bond monitors the Instagram stuff. I monitor the email and YouTube. We have some exciting things come up, but I wanted to get to a question that we actually got some time ago and just never got around to addressing it. And I was looking for it. I cannot find it, but I'm going to give it to you. Okay. A paraphrase. So um, the person wrote that, you know, I've shared kind of a a story. I'm kind of like, eh, that's kind of where my belief is. Like, eh. Yeah. (laughs) No, I don't. eh, Probably not. Probably not. But. But, but, as you know, and I've shared here a couple times, as this person mentioned, I had a, I kind of had a weird experience. A friend died, and you know, kind of really a mentor sort of figure, mm-hmm. right, right. And uh, uh, the day he died, you know, I he he was a guy I learned a lot of music, particularly guitar and banjo from, and right. I had to go to Bradford. Pennsylvania on the day he died and so I I had a hotel room and everything and Mm -hmm. well a motel and I brought a guitar with me because I was like well if I'm going to see a ghost ever right we would probably be now and I should be ready you know right nothing happened of course Mm -hmm. Um, but a few days later I was laying in bed. It was the wee hours of the morning, and I swore he was just in the corner of the room. And that wouldn't be too weird because I would obviously I could dismiss that and be like, "Well, of course, I, I thought he was mm-hmm. there. I was I was half awake, and you know I missed him, and I kind of mm-hmm. wanted to you know see him one more time and all these things." And so of course my mind would do that, or I'd be coming out of a dream. These are all very right. reasonable things. But the weird thing was, uh, I was washing dishes in the morning, and my wife came down, hadn't talked to her about it, and she said that she felt all that. I hadn't even told her oh, my yeah. feelings. And so that's that's that one experience I had. This is mm-hmm. like, um, you know, the revelation sort of thing. So right. it still could be that we both just had those feelings. Right. Right? This is clearly an important For person sure. to me. So that, that was like my experience that kind of keeps me like, yeah. So the person that asked, you know, they said I'd share that a couple of times, mm-hmm. but they never heard like, why do you, did you ever have any sort of revelatory moment or experiences that, so, <laughs> cause yeah, because I always felt yeah. like, again, when this started, Mike reached out to you, Mike, mm-hmm. our, our friend Mike started all this. And he reached out to you because he knew you were really into it. And he specifically reached out to me because he knew why I liked all the stories. I just did. I'm, he said, you don't believe in anything. You'd be great. <laughs> well, right. No, which is no, but that's like Mike wasn't wrong by, by, by wanting those two sides of the things. It's funny because like for, for myself, it's kind of like a lot of little things have happened in my life. Um, I don't have. And I'm sure, like, as I'm going to say this, my friends listening are going to be like, well, what about this? Or what about this? Or what about this? But, like, I don't I might like, say that. Right, yeah. I, I. It's hard because so much weird stuff just happens, like, regularly to me. I end up 
just kind of like being open to things. And I think that started for me like early on. I always just thought like ghost stories and cryptids and ufos and all that stuff i was one of those people who like you know whenever you would go to like the library you'd find that that strange section of the library that had like the books with the surgeon's photo of the loch ness monster and stills from the patterson gimlin film and pictures of like you know a woman in white that's apparently coming down a staircase you know or the coddington fairies I just thought that stuff was fascinating because I think when I was little, it was just like an extension of like real world fantasy elements from like Tolkien and from the Ghostbusters and just like all these things that I liked when I was little. So it was all something I was just like genuinely like just like connected with. And then as I, as I got older, I had a lot of friends and family that had a lot of really strange experiences even though I didn't really have any whenever I was like, you know, uh, younger again, I'm sure I, I, I did, but I'm just like, not, not recalling them at this moment. Nothing where I saw like a, uh, full bodied apparition or something like what you're talking about where you're like, mm. so I have had like weird things happen to me whenever I was younger, but a lot of them, I similar to what you were talking about, where I could kind of explain them away. And because I'm someone who just generally is kind of, I don't want to say like gullible, if there's something I get excited about, like, boy, could I get excited about it? And that goes in a lot of different, you know, a lot of different ways. Like I'm an easy person to, uh, if someone was trying to like hoax or something, I'd be, I'd be ready to go. Like I'd be a great mark for that person. So I had a lot of things happen to me that were like small and everything, but a lot of friends that had some really, really strange things happen. And I believed them. And I think also I saw how it affected them in both good and bad ways. And I think that only kind of like deepened why I was so into this stuff and so curious to hear people's stories and just kind of wanting to uh, wanting to learn more and being open to like, okay, well, if we're going to question one thing or the other, like, why not a lot of it, you know? I had a, I've had a lot of like really strange kind of like little things happen to me. It's funny. We were just recently talking about stuff that happened in harmony and uh, we um, used to have a second shop beyond what we were, what we've talked about before that was again, didn't feel bad. It wasn't haunted in that sense, but it was one of the first places that I'd ever been that had um, like very consistent like auditory activity. I think I know what you're talking about. Um, was this the time that you walked in and you were opening the place up? And yeah. You turned on the light and you said hello to the place. Yeah, just out of respect, I say hello to places. As from the, if I'm the only one there, and the light crackled, and it sat. It made like this like arcing sound, and it sounded like it said hello. Yeah, or, or I good remember morning that, or something like that. Yeah. It freaked the hell out of me. I locked the door and I left. It was like a Saturday morning, like eight o'clock in the morning. You would hear people running up and down the stairs in another place that, and that happened with other people in the building. Like I well, remember, I, 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 I will we had say, clients, we had clients that would be there, and we yeah. had to stop recording because they'd be like, "Someone's out in the hall," and I'd be like, "No, there's not." Like you can go check, and they'd go check and be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> I'd be like, "Yeah, it's fine." Like it's. Well, I'll tell you a couple stories. Yeah. Recently, I was there with uh, our friend Sean and Christine. Mm -hmm. and we were to rehearse some stuff. There was a squirrel. We saw that the bottom of the door had been chewed, and then this erupted into like a twenty minute saga of one we we were all very quiet looking for the squirrel and then sean found the squirrel and i thought he was lying he's like there it is and that's that's just you know sean yeah and uh but no there it was and it was running directly at me and then we we eventually were able to shoo it and, and get it out but it was quite the spectacle. That's the second crazy squirrel story from that. The like, second you know I mean? crazy. Yeah, I, I once. It's not a proud <laughs> moment in my life, but I once called the police on a squirrel. I thought it was this squirrel was belly flopping onto the asphalt from the uh, porch. It was not normal behavior. It was like yeah, it was like basically running across our shoes. It was like, running right at yeah. It was, and I'm <laughs> like, somebody's got to come and put this squirrel down. So I called 
animal con- or I called the game board or something. Yeah. It was like like uh, you're gonna have to call nine one one. I'm like, please don't make me do don't that, make sir. me call nine one one about a damn squirrel. But that's what I did, and off and of course, uh, Officer Melanie and another yeah, officer showed up. And there nice. was there was no. It's like a squirrel had never existed in the abstract. The squirrel was right. totally gone. But um, the, a, a, a sad story. Uh, what uh, came from that night? Coincidentally, yeah, yep. We were talking to a guy that ran a shop below us because this building had yeah. multiple stores in it. It was an old hardware store yeah. from like the, the teens. Well, we were talking and he was telling us about, well, he sometimes was there and he thought he would hear us upstairs, upstairs which wasn't uncommon, right. but, but then he would be leaving and he was still hearing us, but he could tell that there was nobody up right. there. There were no cars around. Mm-hmm. There were no lights on. The door was locked. Right. And it freaked him out. And he said, I try to keep them over here and me over here. And, you right. know, as long as we don't interfere right. with one another. Uh, so there were, there were definitely a lot of people there that, that heard some stuff. I'm not sure right. if I ever did hear anything mm-hmm. that – I never heard anything that I couldn't justify some other way. But I was often I – was, I was seldom there all by myself. Yeah, see, I was there – I feel like I was there quite a bit all by myself and just, like, editing and stuff and – because it was a great place to get work done. Yeah. Very quiet, you know. Um, Yeah, very quiet when you're not hearing phantom noises. Right, yeah. Um, But again, never, like, bad vibes with it. It was never, like, scary. It was just like, oh, that's that's something. But there was also uh, one place that had really consistent activity that was, like, really kind of freaky was my brother had an apartment up in slippery rock with uh, a few of his friends whenever we were back in college and it was um they had this like attic space that um they like opened up because like who know like for whatever reason but they opened it up and looked in i can't remember what was up there but something was in the attic space and they were like nope no, thank you. And like closed it. You would, I would stay over there and you would hear like running up in the attic and the attic wasn't big enough for like a person to be running. And it was yeah. very like, obviously like people steps, not like a raccoon or something, but it was so common that it wasn't like scary. Like it did freak me out at first. Cause be, I remember laying, sitting there in, like the freaking uncomfortable futon and just being like, how am I going to sleep tonight with like whatever this is. But then years and years later, we were at a, we were at, I can't remember if we were at a party or we were at the brewery or somewhere, but uh, my brother ran into someone who years later lived in that same apartment, the exact same apartment. And told my brother that it was haunted and they heard footsteps all the time. And that was like a very strange kind of confirmation story. We're like, okay, that wasn't just like, yeah. an us, it wasn't just like an us thing. That's a um, weird one. Yeah. It was just strange. So I've had a lot of other, like just kind of really weird synchronicities happen. A lot of personal, like just, you know, things, things kind of going on. They just like always leave me open to like, mom, well, maybe there's some other, there is some other stuff happening. I've seen a few things that I I really can't explain, but uh, but again, most of them are kind of ephemeral in that sense. Where I'm like, ah, like you said, we're like, it could have been, it could have been something else, you know. So yeah. I guess I guess I've just kind of learned to be open to things because of the experiences other people around me have so often had. Just a general a general interest. Now, I, we may have to do a part B to this episode where all my friends are like, well, tell this story and tell this story and tell this story. I'll be like, oh, yeah, okay. You're yeah, right. right. Um, because, again, it gets it, – it does – it's one of those things where it kind of gets normalized. And stuff that would freak you out at one point in your life eventually just kind of becomes commonplace almost, you know? Well, one of the more commonplace ones, and, again, this is something we, we kind of both experienced, but this is from my end of it. Uh, speaking of that town, you mm-hmm. and I had shared an apartment, and you yeah. and well, m- you and Mike, who we mentioned earlier, Mike had started this. Uh, you, Mike, and our other oh, friend geez. Greg had all moved in to this uh, apartment. I would yeah. move in later. I would move in late. Um, I-, I moved in around November, mm-hmm. but the day that the three of you moved in, we were playing a show mm-hmm. in Elwood. Yeah. 
And the handy Greg had let the handyman in, and the the guy he was a brand new building, mm -hmm. first occupants, and and that man unfortunately had a, a fatal heart attack while he was right. there, and of course right. then Greg found him, and then you and Mike got back a little after Greg because mm -hmm. breaking down from the gig right. and whatnot, right? And uh, so yeah, so somebody died in our apartment like before anyone really mm -hmm. lived there right. before the first night, right? And yeah. So what was weird, because again, I wasn't living mm -hmm. there yet. Um, what was weird was that I was at a different college and I moved down with you guys and then everybody left. Everybody went home for like the, the winter break or whatnot. Every, you guys had all gone home for the winter break. Right. And I had a job at an auto garage which was somewhat ironic because my car was not running at all <laughs> yeah. and it was just kind of dead out there. But uh, that's a whole other story. Anyhow, uh, it was a warm winter. And I remember I spent all December and a lot of January, I would wake up in the morning, I would walk to the auto garage and then I would walk back and I left the auto garage around four and I had just enough time. I would get into the to the apartment. It's this it's a huge apartment building, and I would get there. And I was I was the only person living there over the winter break. Right, right. And so I would I would get in. I would take like a ten minute shower. I would make something to eat, and then I would lock myself in the bedroom, and I would turn on the TV or the radio all night. So if I heard anything weird, I could dismiss it. But of course, radio was always like late night. It was on coast to coast AM. Right. So there were some nights which, which, which like, didn't, didn't help anything. <laughs> anytime they did EVPs, I was like, I want to, but I should not listen to this at all. And I right. would turn my yeah. I had a portable TV. It was portable because it had rabbit ears built in and it had uh -huh. a handle. And uh, so that that was my experience. I remember one time after Mike and Greg moved back in, they're like, hey, we're going to go pick up something from the grocery store. Do you want to come? And I said, nah, I'm kind of into this TCM right now. And uh, and they left. And about five minutes later, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go stand in the, in the breezeway and wait for them. But the funniest thing was many oh. years later, I was uh, working as a professional. I had an intern in a car with me. And we were driving by that old apartment complex. And she had graduated from there and she goes, oh my God, you see those apartments there? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, you know, they're supposed to be haunted. And I said, oh yeah? She goes, yeah, supposedly a man died there. I'm like, yeah, he was the handyman. We found him in Greg's closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. She didn't believe me for yeah. a while, but I was like, no, no, no. no. And then the crazier G G thing. G102, yep. The crazier thing yet. Yep was a woman I, I know very well now, work with professionally and have mm -hmm. now for 15 years, did not know her back then, but she lived immediately above us. And she had heard, and she, because she had met really? the guy a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. My friend Heather, yeah. And uh, yeah, she uh, she said she didn't like the guy, but she's like, she felt bad for us, but oh, right. she didn't for know sure. us. For sure, She's yeah. like, it was kind of a hard, heavy thing to deal with. Because I guess she had moved in like a day or two before, but mm -hmm. yeah. That's wild. Yeah, pretty wild, pretty wild. I think I've shared this story before, but it's just, you're, yeah, you're stating no, it's, about it's your a, brother's apartment. Yeah, no, Supper Rock's a weird little town, too. There's well, probably a few other good haunting stories when there. I When I left there, I moved with yeah. our friend Danny and his sister, uh, Aaron, and and uh, uh, one of her friends, Jesus. Yeah. We moved into what was, apparently it was the old soccer house. Okay. Yeah. And about a month or two before we moved in, I was. Oh, that place was around, weird. Yeah. Well, I was walking yeah. around town early in the morning. Uh, I think I was walking to, to get to a payphone. This is, I didn't have a cell phone back then. This would have been about 2005, and I saw one of uh, one of my professors. He was he was on a cell phone, and there was like the body of a young guy in the backyard. Apparently, had fallen off that back porch and asphyxiated. Yeah. Right, which is awful. Um, it is awful. And then I moved in there a couple months later right. with Danny and Aaron and Jesus. Ugh. But um, yeah, I, I think I was going somewhere with. Oh yeah, pizza pizza places would never deliver us, and we would hear people say like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, that place is haunted." 
and we would right. go, no, it's just a, it's just a bedpan. It's just a gross place. Right. And a lot of the people that have lived here have trashed it, but yeah, it had a reputation. Never had anything spooky happen there. Yeah. But I know we, we didn't really yeah. stay there very long. It was yeah, a weird place, place. Yeah. A place, the vibes in that place weren't great. Um, nah, it was it was not great because it was just gross. I remember yeah. the vent would kick on and I could see like mold spores shooting Ugh. up in the air. <laughs> well, we we should do a slip rock centric episode because like I know that um well Miller, the Alamo well the Alamo Miller Auditorium yeah like there's a few places that have like pretty well established tr like traditions of like ghosts. I've like, I know um, some spooky things from the Alamo. Yeah. The Alamo is an apartment complex. It's an old. It's it looks like it was an old bowling alley or, or right. electric something store like or something. But yeah, and it wasn't called the Alamo back then. But because mm -hmm. the front facade looks looks vaguely yeah. Texan, everybody's just called it the Alamo. And if you were a punker, a greaser, or an art student that was a little much, you ended up living there at least, you know, half the time. And there was, at least you know, sometimes there was, <laughs> right. There were times where there were like eight kids living in a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment. Yeah. Um, because it was, it was cheap. It was an experience. I think yeah. Aaron, I, I think our good friend Aaron, mm -hmm. who's a, a, you know, lived there longer than anybody. But I remember staying with him quite frequently and sleeping on his couch and i i swear to god i watched that refrigerator door open but it was also a really old beat refrigerator and it right yeah been it's like not the, yeah and it, and it had a latch it was not <laughs> you know just a sort of yeah so i'm gonna have to put a, i'm gonna have to put a call out there to, to all our other slipper rock friends to do a slipper rock centric episode i think that i think that, that would be fun so hopefully we'll have more to come on that. And, and again, like I said, we might be doing a part B to this. But if you have anything you'd like to ask us or any stories you'd like to share, uh, or again, if you went to Slippery Rock or another haunted college, um, let us know. So again, you can reach out to us, as Nick mentioned, on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. Or you can send us an email at theghostfurnacepodcast at gmail.com. And I'm going to, like I said, um, now that we're doing these ghost light things, we're finally catching up on some of these. Uh, because like I said, this question came to us quite some time ago. Right. Uh, and I, I wasn't even able to find the email when I was trying to pull it up. So, <laughs> But no, do appreciate those. And if, if you've sent us an email that we haven't gotten to, um, if it's been a while, feel free to send it again. Um, because we do really want to uh, address some of these questions. It's It's fun. And it enables us to do something on a little bit of a shorter side. So, right. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everyone.